The desired intent of this video is in the free sharing of information. It in no way claims to be the best or even the preferred method to achieve the desired goal mentioned earlier. It is just the technique I used and wish to share. It is not meant to discourage, much less replace, the use of commercially available products. In fact, I highly recommend purchasing and using commercial products and keeping these people in business. It's a small market and many of them are personal friends. By continuing to view this video, you agree that you have read and understood the disclaimer statement contained within the description of this video. Use this at your own risk, sailors. Now, gentlemen, let's see how long it takes to flood a tank. Okay. And starting. Okay. Hear the air coming out of the tank. Lower check valve. That's perfectly normal. It's being displaced by the water coming in by the inboard pump, which is pulling it through the outboard pump. Tank is filling. The air is coming out there can't come up the tube because there's a check valve going the other way preventing it from coming out from the induction tube. Here we go. And we'll be able to tell when she's fully ballasted, of course, she'll be low in the water. When she's fully flooded, I should say, she'll be low in the water and the bubbles will stop. Oh, so yeah. she's definitely happy. flooded because the system works. The dual pumps work, pumping through each other instead of a single reversible pump. So, what does that mean? Let's see how long. What we have here is a fully flooded ballast tank. Let's time the length it takes to empty the tank. Okay. So right now what's going on is that outboard pump there where you see the water trickling around the battery, that's pulling water from the tank, okay, through a check valve. So the water will not pull into the tank. The air is coming through this induction hose, which would be hooked up to a snorkel. But as you can see, the tank is coming up. And in a few moments, she should be blown. We'll be able to tell immediately when she's blown because the tank uh, the water will uh, stop pumping you'll get the obligatory sucking sound right there okay mark at that point we'll check it but I'm digging it all right okay we saw on the initial functional test of the ballast displacement system that the concept of using two pumps in line radial pumps will work there was not only enough pressure to overcome going through uh, an off pump but enough pressure to make sure it was able to go through the additional check valve so the reason why i had to do this is i was originally using um, these paddle style pumps or radio pumps as well uh, commercially available but the problem is they're like forty dollars a piece plus I had bad experience with them this is one that after a single use had obviously developed a leak from somewhere and I don't believe it's my housing okay 
can see that housing there. Here's one with a housing that hasn't been used yet. It's sealed quite a bit, and I also pressure test them, so the leak was coming from somewhere internal. But again, at $40 a pop, I can't afford a single-use mechanism. So I decided to go with these 12-volt brushless motor. I believe the rating is 240 liter per hour pumps with 10,000 hour service life. Okay, And at $3 from China or $7 from Amazon a piece, these submersible pumps should work great, provided they were able to work in this application. And we proved yesterday it did. Now, what else I'm going to do today is I'm going to test the fact that I am using a single reversing switch. Normally in a situation like this, you would want to have some time, whether it was a mechanical or switch, that would go on, center, off, on. Okay, Maybe a servo hitting a contact switch, two contact switches at either end, or an electronic switch to do that. Um, but in this case, in the Shark, I have a single reversing switch, much like an ESC. So what I had to do was add some reverse protection diodes just to make sure one would be on and the other would be off. So they're not working against each other. So without further ado, as you can see, the tank is in the fully blown condition. We're gonna now operate it and diving, should the water should come in through the flood pump, which is the outboard pump, for pushing its way through the off blow pump in to the back of the um, ballast tank, filling the ballast tank with water where air is going to be forced out the top through a check valve and bubble underneath. Then when it comes time to uh, blow the tank, we'll show how that works. So I'm setting now to flood the tank and We'll, uh, we're going to run a timer, but I've been seeing that about 54 seconds. So here we go, and let's begin to uh, flood the tank and commence a dive. Okay. Bubbles are coming out underneath through the check valve. Discharging here through the check valve underneath. So the only direction the air can go is out that and not out the induction valve because that has a check valve going the other way. I'm now drawing 0.26 amps and that's important because this pump, if you look at the sea view video when I was testing the tank, it drew about 11 amps. 11 amps each direction. And here I am drawing just over a quarter amp, 12.13 volts, that's 3.1 watts. These motors are rated at 4 watts. So, tank is almost fully flooded. Bubbles are still coming. I think it's about 54 seconds or so. And there we go. And we have a fully flooded ballast tank. Alright. Now, we'll reverse the leads same leads we're going to reverse them just as if you were using a single ESC or speed control to uh, to have run the old pump since I'm retrofitting the shark we will now surface the boat so what will happen here is this pump will come on pulling the water out through the in in pump drawing the water out of the bottom of the ballast tank up forward here, drawing air in through it, through the ch check valve. The check valve for flooding will be pulled shut, so it won't be pulling water in, but it'll be pulling air in through this induction valve. So let's, or I'm sorry, induction tubing. So let's give it a run. And here we are. You can see the water coming out, successfully pulling it through the inboard pump, I'm drawing 12.1615 volts, 0 0.25, 0 0.26 amps, 3.1 watts again. And here we are. 
And again, what's going on? I could see the air kind of coming in with some water coming in. What lends itself, those of you who know this, this system was originally designed by Skip. It's beginning to float. Is that you can use a gas backup with this. So this lends itself better to larger boats where you have the room for these two pumps and for the running gear but you still have a gas backup to blow should the model get into trouble and there we go she's fully blown and you can hear the motor and that's it and now the tank is on the surface all right so that's it I'm very happy with it. It's about 54 seconds each way, and I'm drawing only about a quarter of an amp. And in my larger boats, I have the room for this. So um, definitely a successful test. I'm going to take it apart, tighten up the wiring a little bit, and install it in the Shark and give you a quick video with that. I hope this is all informative uh, <laughs> for Ballast Tanks 101. But... Uh, very good system, especially if you have a large boat.